Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. Today's video is about accessories for the Surface tablets and or other tablets. If you guys are looking for something, I've done a lot of research, so this video will save you a lot of time. So stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. What I like about this setup is that this is a six to eight hours sitting in a camping chair or any type of chair setup. Like this is very comfortable. I can sit and type and can type arms in or out, use the trackpad. And uh, this is just as comfortable as working at a desk. The screen lifted, this is fantastic. I don't feel cramped. My feet uh, can rest down. I have this plugged into the portable battery right behind my back, which again, provides nice lumbar support and is comfortable. This is being held up comfortably um, by the stand, the stand I'm sitting on, again, comfortable and then if I'm drawing this is exactly where uh, I want this to be. I can bring it up, can tilt it, uh, can adjust it, uh, all sorts of different angles and options that I have that I didn't have before and like I said this is comfortable. It's not. I'm not trading comfort or productivity for mobility and that's kind of the point of this, this uh, surface guide is that how do we work in a better environment without sacrificing um, anything. I, we just, I just want to be out inside in nature. I just want to be able to hear uh, the birds and, and look at the water or be around trees while I'm working. So again, if this is something that appeals to you, this is a great channel for you. Is that over dramatic? Uh, it's not over dramatic, is it? Yeah, I just wanted to do a quick demo and show you guys what it's like uh, working outside. You can be quick and efficient and comfortable. And uh, this is Paint Tool Sci version 2 with the Tablet Pro Artist Pad. For this video, I'm not going to do uh, kind of what I want to do, which is to go through everything in detail and kind of say why I don't like everything. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to keep this short and sweet, or at least shorter and sweeter, and just kind of go over what I actually use on a daily basis. I have a lot of options here, obviously. So what works for me and why do I use it as opposed to why do I not use some of these other products? All right, so I'm going to start with keyboards. Uh, the one that I actually use is this Microsoft one. This is actually a um, Wi-Fi, not a Bluetooth keyboard. What I like about it is it's really easy to use, the keys are, are large enough and far enough apart that I'm not accidentally hitting things, I don't feel cramped, there's good key travel. The trackpad is off to the side, which unlike this as my second choice, this is a, um, a Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth 5.0. The trackpad it accidentally gets touched. It's not as bad as the first version. Uh, I'll put the link to what this is and I'll separate this video out into chapters. This one I have a little uh, adapter in. This is USB-C charging, and this port is kind of junk. It doesn't work uh, very well, kind of insecure and wobbles, and so this little adapter allows me to charge uh, without having to fiddle with the um, port connection in there. Bluetooth it lights up um, and changes colors and attaches to the bottom of the surface. Uh, surface, I think, four, five, six, seven. So not a bad option, it's around 50 bucks. This one's around 40 bucks, it uses AA batteries. It works really well. Uh, these other ones, just problems with track pads. Uh, I didn't like the way or the key setup, um, but none of them do I actually use. This is the first generation of this one right here, um, or the last generation, and it has a proprietary charging port, which uh, annoys the crap out of me, and it had gestures set up to the track pad that would drive me bonkers. So I wrote scripts to disable them and it just was just very frustrating. All right, so the one I actually use is this one by Microsoft, it's right around 40 bucks. Again, I'll put the link in the description. This one 
is decent. It's a magnetic option, uh, dirty, but you can see the type of uh, material that it is, and I will put the name in the description um, as well as the links. Second thing I'm going to talk about here is these little uh, wide angle lenses for webcam use. So right here, um, I use these, probably most people won't. I use a green screen behind me when I video, and uh, these will keep the the uh, computer close enough for me to interact with it, but give a wide angle video to uh, for what I'm recording. So it's not just my face, I actually get my shoulders and upper body in there using these. This is the one I use, this is the one I don't use. And um, I'll put the link to this one in the description. All right, the next part is pen tips. I'm gonna have a separate video about these. What is the difference between all these different ones and why would you choose one over the other? Uh, for the most part, just the standard Microsoft one it used to come in a different style pack. It comes like this now, and it's roughly 13 bucks. It has the B, H, B, and 2H in it. Um, I don't prefer this. This is fine, 13 bucks. What I actually prefer is uh, the ones that I sell. Oh, that's open right here. The reason is because they're all HB. It's the same exact material, same design, and has the tip in it that I use as opposed to one tip that I use, the HB, and then another one, and the B is fine, but negligible difference, I can't really tell, and has one of the plasticky tips in it, which again, I don't personally use, but uh, is an option, and this pack is 10 bucks. All right, for the styluses, this is my wheelhouse, and I have a couple different options in here for what I actually um, prefer for different ranges. Uh, the first one is a generic one. Uh, this is uh, DigiRoot, and this is a generic stylus that will go on any screen, including your phone, and it's capacitive, and it's 10 bucks, and actually for what it is, being able to jump between screens, if, if you're not actually doing artwork, but more navigation or different things, and just signing documents for 10 bucks, it's a good choice if you are looking for something cheap and uh, that works well for what it is. Again, works on iOS, works on anything that your finger will work on. It's a fancy finger. Okay, then over here is this cool one, which I did a video on, the Adonic Ink M. This side is a mouse. It has two buttons on it, your middle and right mouse buttons. You hold it like this and move the mouse cursor, and it works actually pretty good. The other side is a uh, pressure sensitive stylus, 4,096 levels of pressure. The line quality is moderate, it's not great, it's not bad. And then you have your eraser and your right, the invert and barrel or eraser and right click buttons for the stylus. It does not have tilt um, and is about 70, 80 bucks. The surface stylus is good, um, not my favorite. It's between 70 and 100 bucks. Uh, the one that I actually use is the Renacer stylus. Um, this one is 40 bucks roughly. It has tilt, it's magnetic. You can see the one I have here on my computer. This one is the ice blue one. And it has really nice clean lines. I think slightly nicer, slightly cleaner than the surface stylus and it has a better pressure curve. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have Bluetooth. It charges quickly with micro USB and it is a very long battery life, um, usually a month or two before you need to charge, if even then. For controllers, I like this style. I like the slightly opaque one. These are just 60 bucks, they're Bluetooth. Nothing fancy or surprising here. I don't use the Steam ones. Uh, obviously, I, I mean, I don't use the VR um, controllers except for if I'm doing VR, which I don't do anymore because it was very frustrating and problematic. Um, what I use, I got this with my Xbox One X. This is a Elite Series 2, which is the Bluetooth version of the Elite controller. It has these paddles on the back. Um, I have an external, or I have an extra accessory battery, which charges through the port up here. This is a um, another of the adapters. 
Let's go ahead and pull this out. This is a uh, micro USB, uh, which is my least favorite port type. And so I put this little adapter on it and then I can just charge it. I can charge it really quickly uh, without having to switch between cables. I just use the same cable over and over again. This is a massively expensive controller. Like I said, I got it with my Xbox One. I was very fortunate to find one that um, had, isn't that cool? Super easy. Um, that I found a Xbox One X for sale that had uh, the Elite controller with it. So that was a great find. All right, so that's what I use for controllers. Again, this is like 200 and something bucks. It's so expensive, but if you're gonna buy one nice controller, it's a good time to get it. Um, they're uh, game changers, literally. All right, the next thing here is this little cable. And this cable came with a pack of, I think it was four of these, and a bunch of these little uh, tips that plug in. It has micro USB, it has lightning, and it has USB-C. Uh, these are not fast charging solutions, but it is an extremely easy solution. I keep one cable next to my bedside. I can charge my phone, controller, uh, anything else I'm using that has um, a USB uh, connection or charging mechanism. There, just they all just easily adapt or easily uh, snap into charge, and you can do it at night. It's very very easy to use. Uh, I think they were like 15 bucks or something. It was not expensive. So this is a notable. Uh, addition, if you guys have, like me, a iPhone and uh, actually anything with USB-C on it, um, get this. This is a little cable. It's USB-C to lightning. Uh, this is going to charge your devices much, much faster, um, far faster than the quick charging uh, on other devices like wireless chargers or anything that plugs into uh, USB-A. You can charge your phone from the USB-C port on your Surface, uh, even on a Surface Go, this is going to be much faster and this was very reasonable. Here I have two uh, car chargers. These are both USB-C. Um, this is the one that I'd recommend. Uh, I like using uniform products by the same manufacturer. Um, this is a 45 watt charger and it's enough to run a 45 or 60. It's enough to run 45 watt. A Surface Pro 7 easily from the USB-C adapter and you can use this to charge one of these power banks and the power banks uh, also by Jago Tech uh, I like these a lot there's two choices here that I recommend the little one the excursion is a 45 watt charger it has um, three ports here the 45 watt charger is the USB-C and then 15 watt charger are the USB-A ports. I like this small enough to easily fit in my pocket. The other one is their brand new one. This is the Z series, it's a 100 watt charger, which means you can power a Surface Book 3 uh, almost at full. Um, I think Surface Book 3 is like 112 watt, but you can do quite a bit with this battery and it is the largest capacity battery that you can get for um, the price is uh, like right around 130 and there's a discount code that you can use from this channel, Tablet Pro 10, and I'll put that in the description. Normally these 100 watt batteries are quite expensive, like this is a 100 watt battery and I believe it's a little over 200 bucks. So 120 uh, or 130 is actually a very uh, good price for this quality you can charge through. So that means you can have it plugged into the wall going into here and then this out to whatever device it is that you're trying to to charge and it'll it'll do that very nicely all right tablet stands i'm not actually doing mice this is just to provide extra clutter no mice all right tablet stands this is actually one of my favorite topics and it's one that's almost never discussed i think it's extremely important because i don't like a desk setup so i want to be able to work like outside on a chair or in my car, or different places, and so these stands make a big difference in whether or not I can work. This one is the one I, I was using for a long time. Um, it did, however, break right there. Um, I like the size, the height. I like that it folds down to nearly flat. 
This is rather large, and I think there needs to be a better solution than this. Um, roughly, I think about 30 or 40 bucks. And over here is the new one that I got. Um, and this one so far I like, I like quite a bit. It has built into the base something that the other ones don't have, which is a Allen wrench so you can tighten up all the different sections that you're using um, this pivots around so it faces the other way. It's a really tall stand as well. This one will go up uh, about here, which when you're sitting down right in front is not exactly as tall as I want it to be. Um, but this makes working from your lap uh, actually comfortable enough to do for a long period of time as opposed to what really is I think it's really uncomfortable. I have to cross my legs and then balance the tablet on top of my legs in order to get it to a height that's usable and not even ideal. So these tablet stands make a big, big difference for me. Uh, I highly recommend, uh, actually this one right here, I haven't fully vetted it, but I like it and probably the best option so far I've tested, best quality for sure. And this was kind of pricey, it was around 60 bucks. But if you're not buying uh, all of your regular surface accessories at full price, then this is a good option. And a reminder, you can get most of these accessories if they're made by Microsoft with a 10% discount um, if you are a parent, a student, or military. All right, these tablet holders, these other ones, this is the one I use for my car. It's actually two pieces, uh, Cobra Tech, and then this connection right here is a separate piece. Uh, I'll link to those. This linking process is going to be quite a beast. This one is a homemade abomination that I would sit on as largely Home Depot and then a salvaged part here from another device. Um, the one I actually use is this one right here. It has three arms, one, two, three, and this really nice um, tablet holder that does a good job with larger size tablets. Uh, one thing you want to keep in mind, and then this screws into the desk. I use it on my nightstand. The one thing you want to keep in mind is some of these do not expand all the way to large enough to hold a Surface Pro 7. Uh, definitely not a Surface Book. This one will hold a Surface Book, a Surface Pro 7, Surface Go, uh, all of those just fine. This one is only large enough to hold a Surface Go. It will not hold the Surface Pro 7. So these matter quite a bit. This one also will droop. And it, if you get the wrong type here, it's, it's going to fall over. The base is not heavy enough. There's a bunch of different problems with them. And so you want to make sure that you get one that's been tested, whether tested by me or someone else you trust. I don't really care, but keep that in mind. Um, this one right here is not really what I would recommend for an artist, but it works great for kitchen use. This was sent to me um, by... Uh, you bow, I believe I'm saying that correct. And uh, this just simple if you need recipes or something for the kids to watch their iPad or something on, uh, this is fine. All right, over here I have little USB-A thumb drives, uh, a couple different brands. This is the one that I ended up liking the most. It's a 256 gigabyte uh, sand disk. And these work well if you already have something installed, like you can run a video game, like a AAA video game off of one of these, which is fine. The install process is a beast. Same thing with micro SD cards. Uh, I'll show you the micro SD card I use right after this. But these just are so, so slow. I, good for certain things, but I would, I would install the game on your computer and put everything else on one of these instead, like your photos and videos, uh, or dump everything on OneDrive or make sure that you have a Surface computer that has a large enough uh, hard drive that you don't need to swap storage over. Last thing here is the Lexar 1800X, 128 gigabyte micro SD. Um, this is XE2. And uh, these are so tricky to understand. Um, very hard to understand. That three means it's fast. That two right there means it's fast. And the 1800X means it's fast. Uh, if you have one that has a one, it's going to be really slow. And obviously two in the middle. Um, 
if someone knows the actual top speed that the Surface Pro 7, I believe this 5 and 6 have the same um, uh, micro SD card reader in it, if anyone knows the top speed that you can actually access and use a micro SD card in these devices, that would be great. This one is overkill. I think this is uh, like 180 megabytes per second or something like that. And um, the computer actually tops out before that. So this is the one I use. I think it's good. It was not that expensive. I think it was like 50 or 60 bucks. Um, and what I recommend. Uh, definitely a better price than the SanDisk version of the same thing. Roundup time. All right, so this is just what I use. I use the Microsoft keyboard. Um, this is about 40 bucks, and I use it because I don't accidentally hit the trackpad. Full-size keyboard works exactly as I expect it to. This is the R520 stylus. Cleaner lines than the surface. It's magnetic, two buttons. Um, and is great for artists who are doing 3D and 2D art, as well as note takers. I use the above tech stand. I like this because it's got a really nice high range. When I'm sitting, I don't have to cross my legs to elevate the tablet to where I can use it. This will put it up nice and high. It's very stable. It's well made. It has an Allen wrench built into the base, so you can tighten and adjust things uh, to your liking. Seems to be really good quality. Uh, check the link. Uh, for the price, I have the 100 watt charger. So since I like to do a lot of mobile work, this is fantastic. I can charge and run a Surface Book or a MacBook uh, Pro at full speed um, or almost full speed and run basically every application I want. And this is going to be great. It's a good price as well for this type of product. Uh, I use the Artist Pad from Tablet Pro when I'm not using the keyboard because I only bring this on rare occasions, usually I just keep this around the house. So I'll use the Artist Pad from Tablet Pro, which gives me keyboard shortcuts, access to uh, Cortana speech to text, so I can talk, type my stuff instead of using the keyboard, called the keyboard itself, um, just different hotkeys and different, different things. The other tool I use is the pen tool, which allows me to change what the button on the stylus does, which is great because if I'm navigating in ZBrush, or I'm color picking in Photoshop, or I'm taking notes, this gives me an opportunity to really easily switch from program to program uh, exactly what I need the stylus to do. And when you have limited tools in a tablet-only setup, this is gonna be pretty important having these extra functions. All right, that's it. That's my personal setup. I hope this video was helpful. If you guys have questions about products I did not talk about uh, in this video, I know there's quite a bit I didn't, feel free to put it in the comment section. If you've tried some of these products and you can verify that they work great for you, please put that in here as well. I want people to be able to uh, comfortably make these selections and not have to dig around and waste tons of time, um, kind of like I did, in order to figure these things out. All right, until next time, stay creative and have a wonderful day.